with the first pick of the 2022 draft to take Lori Miller. Whoa, here we are again. What is this, like uh, episode 48 of 62? Something like that. I don't know. We've it's got episode a whole number lot of... uh, 362 of 477. And as, this as... one's going to be the greatest one yet. Oh, yeah. Let's get at it. We were trying to do 365 to review all of 2022. So I hope you guys stick with <laughs> it. So, yes. <laughs> every, for every day of last year, we have a show. That's yeah. how it feels right now. Because we have been on a marathon doing this. This has actually been fun. So much so that Lee went to bed. <laughs> in the afternoon <laughs> it's, it's four o'clock and he's like i'm going to bed this has been a lot so yeah good times we're on the marathon session here trying to get as many of these out as possible make sure you tune in and watch all of them because they are all entertaining in their own different ways and we try to hit, watch what rick uh all of our shows our podcast episodes which are uh telling you the best or not even the best but we're trying to highlight key moments in 2022 Based on different subjects, we we have had a science episode that was fun. We just did, which was probably our most fun one. We did a zombie draft. Instead of just you know recognizing those that we lost in 2022, we thought, what if we could build a basketball team? If <laughs> what what, what, what if we could make it as insensitive as possible? <laughs> <laughs> so we had the uh, zombie basketball draft. We built basketball teams out of the zombies of those that we lost in 2022. It was fun, and I'm kind of sad. Duke got Queen Elizabeth, even though she's 96. But I did get Barbara Walters and Meatloaf, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. It's a it's a pretty solid. Just have to check it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen check to everything. The there it is. He's pointing it again. I hope Lee catches those and puts the graphics. Up. I just do that because I hate it when I watch YouTube people and they're like, "Check here," and it's like over here somewhere. So I just should go we do the, uh, wherever do it the... ends up at somewhere over here. How come so we've never you. started a show where we're like, "Oh, hey guys, what's up, guys?" Like they they do in all the other YouTube videos. That's like, coming. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one of the new episodes that we're gonna come out in the future. One of the new podcasts for part of the Take Warning Network in the future is just, hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey what's up, guys? Like and doing? subscribe. You know, oh, I'm um, actually floating an idea kind of like that, but we'll so see everything's happens. been a draft. We're doing drafts for each one of these because it seems to get through all the major points in a, in a really cool, efficient manner, and it's kind of fun. So, um, yeah. without further ado, this is Duper's favorite. He's been looking forward to this one. The politics draft. We're actually calling this the drain the swamp draft 2022. So uh, we're about to drain the swamp with all the headlines that we know of from 2022. And in the order of random listing again, and you can actually see it when you guys look, you sons of bitches. Uh, I actually I, I do. Or Lee was our number one overall, but he uh, he fell asleep. So Duke gets honors. He gets to pick first, uh, followed Moving by Rick and then Greg. All right, so number one overall pick, without a doubt, is congressional support of Ukraine throughout the year. Um, I think that that's probably the biggest story. Uh, I, I don't think that there's enough talk towards peace, and there's far too much warmongering going on. Um, so I, I think that we're, as I said earlier in my 2023 prediction in a earlier show, uh, I, I think the further we go down this road, the the closer we get to nuclear Armageddon. We need to be talking peace and putting together things for peace, not supporting a proxy war. So, I mean, but I mean, at the same time, you do have to support the, the war. But the primary idea should be always towards peace, not towards annihilation. So, I feel like it's like some people are doing that and some people are most people are just doing the proxy war shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I But you have to see it from both sides, right? Someone's got on the other side has to say. Okay, we're gonna sit down and talk to you. We 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 have yeah. to, but you're not getting so much of that from Russia right now, or any of You're not getting so. it from Zelensky though. Zelensky's no. made out to be a hero in the United States, but he's no hero. He's a warmonger. I think everybody's a warmonger at this point, just based on what you see. So yeah, that's uh that's the biggest story I think of 2022. Uh oh, it's mine. I get. Haha. I went to go, Greg. Let's do this one. This one is because I actually remember in 2020 and 2021, I brought this up a couple times on the show, and I actually think about you guys a lot when this happened, when this was uh, being discussed. John Stewart did a really compelling um, story about this, and, and it, it actually mattered to me. It hit me pretty hard knowing that some of my best friends served in the military and uh, were deployed. But the pact law, the burn pits law, was uh, signed and approved. So you guys are actually going to get a little compensation and at least recognition that you were serving around burn pits, which nobody talked about for the longest time, which are fucking horrendous because they were literally just piles of every kind of waste 
and trash and plastic and anything you can think of. That's how we were disposing of our, our, our waste in these countries when we were, you know, there occupied. Um, that's scary because people wound up with cancer, mental health issues, you know, fucking bone deterioration. It's ruining their, their family line. Their kids are, you know, getting it passed down. It's like Agent Orange for uh, the modern era. So the fact that Congress finally recognized it and signed the pact law and, and they're going to give you the proper medical coverage that you deserve for this and the money, I think that was a huge story and it needed a little more recognition than it got. But hooray, we did something right. That's what I got for that. Greg, what's yours? Um, I am just excited that we are not in another government shutdown. So Congress signed the budget or passed the budget and the president yeah. signed it. And we're not going to have another government shutdown, at least for another year. So yeah, thank you, Congress. It, so I am of the opposite opinion of this, obviously. I, I'm, on, I'm actually on Duper's uh, side on this one. <laughs> I, I don't well, like the they, fact. That, so you want a government shutdown? I don't want a shutdown. I right? don't want to sign a 41,000-page document that exactly. nobody's fucking read. Exactly. We need to. We read need it. it. Why? Why do we have to pass all this additional bullshit in order to get a a, a budget? We should have passed it separately without all the additional fluff in there. I couldn't we need agree to with you quit more. doing yeah. this crap. This is how we get into these situations that we find ourselves in, where we don't know what's up and what's down, and then we we we're, we're going to find out in six months. Oh, this was in that bill. Oh, well, that's terrible. It's like when we passed the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which was actually a, a Green Act. It's all bullshit. Like we need to stop doing this. I'm a big advocate of going towards a la carte um, topics that that are, are held one at a time. Like yeah, I know it's not ideal yeah. for 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 uh, Congress people to have to vote individually, but each bill needs to be passed individually, not into these big omnibus so, bullshit bills that we're getting. And, when and it's you say it's not for ideal country. for Congress to have to do it one at a time, don't we fucking pay them to do that? For them, for them individually, yes. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to do it because they, they prefer to, to do their back-end deals into these super big um, omnibus bills, but, yeah, but it's not the right way. It's not, it's not in favor the Fund the military, American that's one thing. Fund infrastructure, yeah. that's another thing. Fund education, that's another thing. That way everybody has a chance to review and actually see what they did. I, this is where I agree with Duford, Greg, because it was 41,000 pages. Nobody had time to read that in the three days before they passed. So maybe I wasn't clear on my communication. I'm clear. <laughs> I'm happy there's not a government shutdown. How about that? That's perfect. I, <laughs> yeah, debating, <laughs> debating, that, debating the budget and the passing of the budget mm -hmm. and you know, all of that. Um, I agree with you. Like there, it totally needs to be reformed, right? It's ridiculous for federal entities to submit their budget request by like June and July. And yet we're in December, which is after the fiscal year, by the way, um, for them to come up with an actual signed budget. And most of the time when these budgets do get signed, it's because they're coming down to the wire yeah. and nobody wants to be responsible um, for, a budget or a shutdown besides, you know, Trump and, you know, other members of Congress. So I'm just happy there's not a government shutdown there. That's it. <laughs> uh, I'm just I, I, I'm, I'm not happy and I don't root for a government shutdown. I just don't think that just signing a bill to pass to avoid a government shutdown is the proper thing to do. So I, I want our government employees to get paid. I, I think there should be a bill probably passed that says if you make under this this threshold of income, your income is guaranteed as long as we are funding these, or your, your income is guaranteed as long as, um, uh, I'm, I'm, oh, I know I'm trying to come about. up with this idea off the fly. So, and, and well, I don't Obama, wanna... Obama actually tried to do something like that similar where he said that, you know, and it was, it was based off like the GS pay scale. I think it was. Yeah. And they were saying, okay, if you're like GS 10 or below, you're getting paid. Yeah. You and and I, I would like and something then, like that, but yeah. with some caveats in there. Right. So I, I don't want to just say that out loud. Um, I've not put any thought into it because I just thought about this, you know, a couple seconds ago. But there needs to be something in there that protects low wage government employees, which is kind of like a not really a thing, but for at least the lower paid employees. Of the I mean, government. there's so many caveats to that but, though, too, because you got to look at the federal contractors. You got to look at that because yeah. those federal contractors are doing the jobs that a civil servant should be doing. But we figured out a way to fucking shice the system there too and save money and and not have any liability. So you have different things like that you have to look at as well. It's 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 a hot mess. I'm just glad the, it, the whole thing is a hot mess. Yeah, let's it's move really on. Awesome. Duper, what's your next pick? Uh, my next pick. Oh, dang, I already picked it earlier. Congress holds a hearing on the UFO, so I can't pick yeah, that, can't one. Do that one. Uh, so I got to – Oh, dang it. Next on the list is the one six committee. Um, and then the tax returns that was all linked to our the subpoena against Donald Trump, which was then pulled. Um. It's a show. 
It's a charade. It worked for the midterms. They're always a show. Uh, yeah, all these committees are shows, right? They're all a show. Like, uh, all of them are the same thing, yeah. I don't think that we've learned anything really new throughout this committee, which is a shame. Uh, I think that the Republican parties taking over the House should actually continue the one six committee and and give a, another perspective as to what happened. Maybe we can find out who planted those. They're pipe shutting bombs. it down, right? Uh, as of now, uh, from what I've heard, but yeah, we should look into who who planted those pipe bombs. Who is Ray Epps, right? I mean, I, I know it's it's a conspiracy theory, but it's not. He actually said that that he helped orchestrate it through text message with people. Um, and yet he's not on the FBI watch list. We need to know why. Um, so there, there's serious questions out there that are unanswered because it was just a political hack job to win the midterms and to, right. to attack Trump. Um, I want to find the truth. I don't care if that involves Trump. I don't care if it exonerates Trump. I would just like to get more truth out of these committees, and that's not what we got. And I don't think we're going to get it either because they're going to go straight to their political talking points, right? They're big things. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen now. We're going to hear about well, Hunter's laptop. You're going to have now, shit like that instead of, you know, which is fine. That that's they there. It's their right to go and investigate these things. That's great. But yeah, it would have been nice for them to continue this, even from a different perspective, yeah. just to get as much information out of this as possible, so we don't have that happen again. Yeah. That's and I, I think the laptop is important to, to figure out the connections between Joe Biden and Ukraine and Joe Biden and China and things of that sort. Uh, we didn't know where where those alliances might occur um but hopefully and i have just, i have very little faith in this but it's just going to be a common or political witch hunt as opposed it's to a, a seek of of truth and understanding exactly it's a show like we were just yeah. saying all right so my second pick overall fbi raids trump's uh estate and finds classified documents just sitting in a fucking basement <laughs> so <laughs> fantastic still haven't recovered all of them either um but yeah that's uh, i think dave Chappelle said it best and he's like this dude didn't even read his presidential daily briefs when he was president but yet he has fucking classified <laughs> documents yeah. his estate. Who, wa- who wants to take work home <laughs> um, <laughs> but so again another charade in my opinion because all every when, when when that raid happened it was oh he had nuclear secrets he had nuclear secrets that's that's not true it's that's, not true it was again propaganda that came out just to attack him because it was right before the midterms and it worked um and it's not even about trump it was about the midterms <sighs> it didn't matter about trump it's about the midterms it, the timing obviously was for the midterms but the fact that he was withholding classified documents the fact that we had uncontrolled classified information is the problem here and that's really and what that's a lot of people issue, recognized right Regardless but that's not but that's not what we talk about that information yeah, nobody we cares don't about the talk about it was that classified part, that but we, so, yeah, absolutely so trump, we did though so but but it became an attack on Trump as a, a, a opposed to a a this is a situation that should be fixed moving forward, right? This is a hole in our system that we need to address, and that's what we should. President learn from this taking lesson. classified documents, yes, that's, they, that's they, they, uh, but he's not the first. He's only the first one to be raided. Okay, so if if we don't want this, then we need to pass laws to prevent it. That's what needs to happen. They won't. Not, but but that's how you know that this is just a political hit job. Is they just came after Trump. They wanted to make it about Trump as opposed to actually passing something that fixes the situation. We've do not we have, seen that. So We've not we, even seen it proposed. This isn't the first time. Do you have proof? Well, we're going to get into an argument that we don't need to. Right. Uh, prove it. That's all I'm saying. All right, Greg, what's your pro- what's your uh, <laughs> question? Uh, so I didn't even know this until I was doing the research, but University of Rhode Island revokes the honorary degrees of Rudy Giuliani and Michael Flynn. So... You know, universities, I mean, if you're a celebrity, I mean, it seems like universities hand out honorary degrees to everybody for everything, right? But this is the first that at least I can remember of a university revoking said honorary degree. Do you guys no, know they, of anybody they, they, else? They will remove it, but typically not in a political sense. But what other person do you know who's had their honorary degree revoked? Bill Cosby. Yeah. That, if, oh, if okay. bringing them up a does, lot today. Yeah. People, yeah, know, right? people that do criminal <laughs> activities and things of that sort, you'll see those those honorary degrees get revoked. Uh, but usually that's where that happens at. When it becomes a political situation like Giuliani and Michael Flynn, that's that is uncommon. That that's that's a political attack. That's not a yeah a, a morality is. stance. Hence why it's under the politics show. Yeah. Which is yes. not good. I don't think it's a good thing. Uh, it's a, it shows more polarization within the United States. 
about us drawing alliances with politics as opposed to I don't think it's um, a good thing to get honorary degrees anyways to celebrities. Exactly. Like, like I agree with that too. Real problem. I like, agree with that too. Who fucking cares who it is? Like. What did you do to earn that? Like, these kids are fucking, first of all, going into debt for the rest of their lives to yeah. get the fucking same degree. And you're just because you're famous, you get one. Like, and fuck not you. to mention that a lot of these honorary degrees are doctorates, too. Yeah. yeah. So so to go back to my, my issue with the one six or the, the Trump raid, I, I think we missed the point on that one. And I think I was missing the point on this one. I agree with Rick um, and, and Greg now is that these honorary degrees are garbage. They're, they're just publicity stunts that shouldn't happen. Exactly. That's the big thing. All right, what's your uh, what's your last pick in the draft? My last. Oh, are we up to the last picks already? We're in the oh. third round already. Mm, then your boy uh, is on there too. So which one are you gonna pick? Hasn't done it yet. He hasn't done it yet. Well, uh, dude, we we could go into the don't say gay bill. We could go into um um uh DeSantis's immigrant um show that he did right because it is a show, but it, it it did exemplify a lot of issues within our uh. The, well, hypocrisy within the immigration system, but I don't think that those are as big as um, this one that I'm going to cover, and that's the Roe versus Wade leak that led to the attempted murder on Justice Brett Kavanaugh. That's huge. We've not seen a leak at this level in the Supreme Court ever. There's been no um, identification of who made that leak. Um, I was this even this year? Was that this year? Yeah. Yes. Wow, wow. this was a crazy year. Um, so for those those things to happen in, in 2022 and, and there be no repercussion on that, that sets a dangerous precedent moving forward um, in any uh, ju- Supreme Court justice rulings. And then that led directly to a, uh, a murder attempt on Brett Kavanaugh, which is um, inexcusable. So I will say this, too. I, I regardless of the politics around Kavanaugh and, and what, what the situation was, uh, this to me as is it is as severe and critical as what happened with one six it's it's very similar it's it's the same thing you guys are this is inappropriate this should never happen this is not this how is, we, this is bigger this than is the Mar-a-Lago stupid. raid without oh doubt. absolutely i i I, um, I think that anytime you're you're because I mean literally you're trying to bring down the government both both attempts yeah, right? right so that's a pro- that's a problem. I don't like that. It's it's fucking garbage. And yeah, it should have been bigger news. First of all, this is only the second time I think I've heard this since it it happened, and then I forgot it even happened, to be honest, because it wasn't covered, it wasn't really talked about, and it really should have been a bigger story. So it, it should, I mean, honestly, it's one of the biggest stories of the year. If it wasn't for Ukraine, um, and then the the Trump fiascos, uh, this this yeah. is huge. This is the one that you're gonna read about in history books, um, because it, it's that impactful. Because Nobody should be leaking that data to the, the press, and it, it was a finished, uh, a nearly finished draft that was leaked. And the yeah. fact that we can't discover who did that, or we don't want to discover who did that, that says a lot about our political system as well. We're just not. Politics we're not a serious. Sucks. We're not. A I don't serious know if you can tell. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, Greg and I weren't excited for the politics draft because <laughs> of this. <laughs> but just... now, I mean, we're getting into it. It's a good conversation. This is why, though, because there's so much where you're just like. Come on, man! Like, why does it have to be this way? You does it matter idiot. your opinion on Roe versus Wade? What matters is 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 the process was damaged. Exactly, and so, that's what yeah. matters. I agree. Um, all right. So for my last pick, I'm gonna take the midterm elections. Uh, the red wave didn't happen. We had an interesting runoff in Georgia against uh, a Heisman Trophy winner and a Reverend. I don't think either one of them were really good candidates no. because they got a national spotlight. You got to hear from both of them, and you're like, oh Jesus, yeah. this is what they had. So like yeah, it was interesting. Um, you saw yeah, a lot of um, a lot of Trump supporter supporters uh, running for office. A lot of them didn't get in. Carrie Lake was probably one of the highest profile that did not so win. So Carrie Lake almost made my list too because that governor race down there in Arizona is very contentious. It's over though. the The courts have already ruled uh, yeah, that there was nothing again. there. So it's it's a dead moot statement. We have to move forward and figure out how to work with what's there. Again, we so, we got to put systems in place so then such questions don't arise again. I don't have a problem with us doing that, but they aren't going to do it because they like the ambiguity. Yeah, yeah, That's absolutely. the beauty of politics, right? They love ambiguity because it gives them an opportunity to question it and get buzzwords out there to make you question if anything's valid, if it's not your opinion, right? That's what they love to do on either side. So, yeah, that's what happens there. But midterms, man, that was kind of a crazy little uh, week and a half, two weeks where people were like, God damn, that did not work out the way we thought it was. So, mm. uh, 
I mean, th- there's a lot of people out there saying, you know, the Democratic and, and the Republican parties are basically all the same. It doesn't fucking matter what side you're on. It really is. Um, but I do prefer a split Congress and House. Um, so I, I think it's good. Uh, it stalemates a lot of, of things that you might want, but that's I, I think that's what we need. I, I need we need more compromise between the parties and more discussion. Um, and, and, and the fact of them being the same party, that's more of an idea and a concept around them just being more out for themselves than they are out for the American people. It's um, a system that's been built now. That's yeah, where we're so. at. What do you got, Greg? What's your last pick? Um, so looking at what's left, and uh, I'm surprised this didn't get picked earlier, especially by you, Rick. I thought you were going to take this one, but the Supreme Court uh, confirmation, actually, so the nomination and then the confirmation of Katanji Brown Jackson, who is the first African American female Supreme Court justice. It's a uh, it's, it's, it's terrible a choice. Name. She doesn't know what a woman is. She can't answer questions honestly. Um, I don't think she's a legitimate. It's choice. so funny because literally thirty seconds ago I said this is why they love ambiguity because they can throw you know people from different sides can throw shit out there to doubt it. I. Uh, She's proven to be capable and balanced, just like Kavanaugh has. So I don't really think that there's. It's it's it was a good pick, apparently so far. So we'll see. Just like I I really and it's funny because I don't what, like what Kavanaugh's politics, but uh, they she was part of the the Roe v. Wade. She ruled on the. Um, she wasn't part of Roe. She ruled state. on the unionization. Um, recently, there was the was the other big ruling they just had and she was a big part of that too yeah she would have been part um, of the december rulings that, that yeah it, she, was she big, would not well, have been part of november of the she end of november session. uh um, I, I i don't like up. somebody who, who's obviously playing political games when when she's asked a very stupid question like what is a woman and she can't answer it that, that that's the dumbest fucking question on this planet now didn't um, she, th- we had the same fucking problem though when we had amy Coleman barrett that was just rushed through like i still feel like i don't know anything about that lady because she was just a you know like hurry up oh, and get it done her. they drilled so, her um, like they, that's that i mean kavanaugh they did drill for sure and and yeah. going into it remember i was kavanaugh like was really fuck bad. kavanaugh i don't like this guy and then he comes out and he's he's showing that He's going to rule, again, not necessarily against what I believe, right? My politics aren't going to be his politics. But I do see that he has been pretty much fair. Like Kavanaugh and ACB have been great the letter picks. Of the law. So have I don't have picks. a problem with Kavanaugh so far. I mean, I don't agree with what they've decided on, like Roe v. Wade and stuff like that. But I do respect the fact that they're being fair about it and they're looking yeah. at the letter of the law. and trying they're, to. They're not, so. they're not right-winged people like Gorchik and um, – and, uh, uh, Clarence Thomas. I mean, I like the way that they rule. I do, but they're very out front with their their political ideas. Um, every Democratic elected or, or chosen Supreme Court justice has been very far left leaning. Hopefully, you're right about KJB uh, or KBJ, because if she is more of a less of an uh, uh, ideologist, ideologist. What what is the word I'm looking for? It's ideologist. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. So. If she's less of that and and more of just a common sense person, kind of like ACB and and uh, Kavanaugh, then then I can support that. But from what I watched and what I saw of her, I've not been impressed. But of course, she's always she's on the Supreme Court now, and all I can do is is hope and pray that she does the best for the country, and uh, we'll see what happens. Sounds good. So honorable mentions. I had my first one out there, so I'm going to throw it out there. Is the Paul Pelosi attack? Um, yeah. By the crazy guy from Canada. From Canada. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So uh, Paul Pelosi being attacked. That's my honorable mention. It's uh, that it sucks. But Did they uh, confirmed that that so was sad. his boyfriend or not? Or no, because we're not going to find that out. They, they, there's, they, yeah. they had home video cameras. The Secret Service was asleep apparently. Like, there's too many, too many loopholes in that entire thing. And wait, the Secret again, Service. Um. Th- so I was like, I did. I don't do they don't protect the speaker of the house, do they? I thought it was uh, presidential yes, family yeah, members. No, no, he does. He has they, she, she, she has they, she service. has protection, she's, but because she was in line. Washington, she was in Washington, so the uh, the detail was with them, uh, with her, yeah. the physical detail. But they had the cameras on the house, and nobody was watching it. But nobody was watching them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there, there's too many questions around that entire scenario. And again, very convenient right before the midterms for it to to drop. Um, again, I just want more transparency out there, man. No matter what, I, I don't care if Paul Pelosi is gay. I don't care if he's not gay. I 
on a morality standpoint, I do care if he's being immoral to his wife and 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 committing adultery, which is one of the big things I don't like about Trump. Uh, but on, on a grand scale, when it just comes to hmm. how it affects Dude, our country, according to this article, the Speaker of the House does not get Secret Service protection. She did. She, she had she some had, kind of protection. She I don't had protection. It was. Maybe it's not Secret Service, but she's got to have some kind of congressional uh, security, yeah. right? She does have security. Oh. Um, so well, yeah, I'm sure they have security, but it's not Secret Service. She's, she's third in line. Different things. She's third in line. It doesn't mean um, she gets Secret Service protection. So, oh my well, God, this it's a technicality. Matter. She has security, and it wasn't there for Paul Pelosi, and it's garbage. And we need to just know the truth again on that. When somebody of that high profile in our country can have somebody break into their house and then attack them with a hammer, that's kind of big freaking deal. That that's a big deal. And again, if we don't know the truth around what happened, how can we prevent it from happening again? I think they know the truth. They're just not revealing it to the people, and, and that's a huge issue. Wow. Dude, you did not go for it with your boy, like, at the all. DeSantis? Yeah. DeSantis? I'm surprised at that. Though well, I feel bad for, like, the migrant thing. I think that shit was fucking hilarious when he sent them to Martha's. Why Vineyard. do you feel bad about it? Just because, like, you know, the way that they strung those guys around, you know? But, but so, is, so here's, here's fair, the problem. You know? He, if DeSantis... they're really illegal, then process them out of the country. Don't send them to Martha's Vineyard. But the or federal the government has not set them up in a situation for success. York. They're not getting their money to to process this number of immigrants. They don't. These border country states are, are, are struggling under the weight of all these immigrants coming across the border. So what did they decide to do? Send them to these sanctuary, quote-unquote, cities in which theoretically would want to help them. And then when they got these people in these sanctuary cities, they didn't uphold their end. Right. What could it what what could have been what what ended up being a big win for DeSantis could have been a big win for Democrats, because what if this DeSantis sent them over there and as sanctuary cities, they would have said, send us more. Right. We, we want them here. Right. We are more than willing and capable to take these immigrants in because these are the future of our country and we love them. We have open hands and open support to anybody you want to send. If they would have done that, the Democrats would have won. Instead, what did it do? It revealed the fact they don't give a shit. So wait, 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 wait. They didn't send them to Boston. They didn't send them to a major city that was a Philadelphia. City. No, no, no. They sent them to they Philadelphia, them to New York Martha's, City, Los Angeles. We're talking about Angeles. Martha's Vineyard, Duper. Yes. So they sent them to an island that doesn't have the structural support for the people that actually live there in that off season. A bus. So what, a bus. Explain to me how that works to in in the favor where they're like, yeah, send us more. Okay, you send them to the major. When they send them to New York City, I get it. I understand what the, the point you're making. You send them to Los Angeles, yeah. also understand the point you're making. But when you send them to the vice president's house or the Martha's Vineyard or these little petty things, it's, it's not petty. petty, though. It's, it's not, petty. It, what it There's shows, a difference what it between shows, sending it to a sanctuary what, what, what it city. Shows, it doesn't it show shows. shit. Send it to a sanctuary city and it shows something. Send them to a fucking island. They've that's, done that, they, too. That's totally They've done different. that, too. That, that was They've actually done, what the Democrats, have, the Democrats have sent immigrants to an island in Florida. Like what are you talking about? What have they done to? Greg that's, Abbott was that's sending people. Stupid. Greg Abbott was already busing them to to mm-hmm. um, New York City, right? right? And nobody gave a shit. It wasn't no, until because, you put because them... New York City said with open arms, we're going to take. No, them. they it's didn't. Tough, but Steve... we're going to figure it out. And they had to no Adams. It out. Adams, the mayor of Ad- Adams, said we need more federal support, kids. We cannot handle this number. Right. We are being overran with immigrants, them. and we cannot handle them. We need to send them back. Same. Dude, Martha's Vineyard just put a big spotlight on it because you have the richest, most powerful people in the world demanding that you take in the off season, demanding that you take these people in. And then once you put them on their doorstep, they don't want it. It showed that these rich and powerful people do not actually want it in their neighborhood. Those people don't they only want it in your there. neighborhood. That's a vacation town. There's 200 people there on that island in the off season. Yeah, they're not going to be able to handle an influx of immigrants. What are you and talking with that, about? With that amount of capital and money within that environment, they should have been more than able to adapt to that. And, and the vacation pull, town? Yes, and pull money together to keep their okay. vacation town intact. And That's with all those immigrants stupid. coming in, they should have said, you know what? We need the employees. We'll hire them. If DeSantis actually gave a shit about the people that he was fucking using for his political stunt, he would have sent them someplace where they might have had a shot at getting taken care of. He has, Rick. No, he, he has. hadn't. He sent them he to Martha's has. Vineyard. He sent them to a fucking a house in the middle of fucking the worst storm that we've had in 10 years. Like, just to dump them off because it's the vice president's house Rick, for a political stunt on fucking December 24th. Okay, on Christmas Eve, is. did he dump fucking immigrants with no jackets, by the way. These people are in fucking T-shirts standing out there. You can go look. You can go look. You're more than welcome because it was on TV, and you can see it. 
It, it's not like I have to fucking listen to NPR. I can actually see it with my own two eyes. The two people got dumped in the middle of a fucking blizzard for a political stunt. They're so treating here, these people let's, like let's fucking go, animals. Let's go and back. Let's go back. Let's go it's back. It's bullshit, to the, dude. No matter Rick. what, it's bullshit that you treat these people that way. I, I don't agree. Care that I agree. I agree, Rick. I agree. I agree. How we You're fix welcome, the, by the way. immigration Fuck problem. <laughs> That's where we need to get to. And maybe one day in penetrating thoughts, we'll have this discussion. And maybe we can do it rationally. But no, we need to. This break... is how Rick and Duper solve the world. This is. But we need we need to break away from this narrative where we fight about the superficial bullshit, and we actually talk about then solving. Don't fucking be issues. superficial and figure it out. That's the fucking point, isn't it? Instead but of these political stunts, in... figure it out. You want to be fucking President DeSantis? Figure some shit out. Make something happen other than be petty. That's the, my point. You want to show me? Great. But I don't need an Elon Musk fucking. Twitter goddamn rant. I need a fucking guy that can show me he's a leader and can solve problems. You're, you're mixing but he's DeSantis. not solving any problems. You're mixing right? DeSantis up with Trump. Really? He runs his own yes. goddamn state and he's not solving it. He's just shipping it elsewhere and he wants to run the country? Yeah, because, everybody's going to really want you. You don't understand the immigration process. They're, they're handicapped by the federal regulations. I didn't know the immigration process involved getting dumped on an island in the off season. Arizona, or in the of Arizona, in front of Arizona, house. Arizona wanted to put National Guard on their, on, on their border. The federal government said, no, you're handicapped as to what you can do about immigration because of federal regulation. Texas tried to do the same thing. They were okay. told no, right? So any political put, stunt is the next solution. Yes, yes, because you can't Absolutely. do anything. You have, to get, you have to get public support and bring awareness to it. You don't you bring you awareness to it, then you can't win it. Because the midterms huh? really showed that there was public support for that kind of bullshit, right? Because, because a lot of the candidates that were running better. with that fucking you, thing. Your argument right now is just propaganda fed. That's it. Mm -hmm. We need to. But you know the root propaganda issue. Fed. You know the root issue. A fucking dude that came from the Honduras is standing out in a t-shirt in a blizzard because he got dumped there. That's propaganda. A dude. A dude and, and, and so that's what you want to focus on. Not the fact that he had to travel from Honduras all the way down to fucking Mexico without a fucking t-shirt. That's the issue. People are dying on their migration. So how do right? we fix But you that? want to worry about you want to worry about a fucking picture in one little city. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, that you're is talking bullshit. about Martha's Vineyard. It's These the same are, fucking thing. It's Rick, literally the Rick, same argument. You have dude. people fucking dying, but nobody nobody takes a picture of that during during the the, the, the oh, transport. Oh, there was plenty of that pictures of matter. Martha's Vineyard. What are you that talking does, about? That doesn't matter, right? Martha's Vineyard matters, but let's go take some pictures in Mexico about these people dying during their their path, the women yeah. being raped during their path, the terrorists mm -hmm. coming through the sitting border. sitting at the border under those, 42 right now. Yeah, those right. don't matter. Those don't that matter, do they? Matter, but nobody wants because to because they don't fit your narrative that you're being fed through your media. That's okay. Stop with it. Like, let's thanks, Greg. <laughs> we gotta finish this goddamn show. It's supposed Dude, to be a draft. I just want to say that that was probably the greatest troll I've ever done in my life. Um, <laughs> thanks for, <laughs> and I have it on video. Um, troll champ until you guys get me like in three hours from now. Oh, we're so, gonna get you so angry. Yes, at some I point know. Now. Uh, <laughs> I'm fucking gunning for you. I'm gunning. Um, however, uh, don't come after my boy DeSantis. Fuck that guy. How about that? This was a very great show, uh, and I am going to put a disclaimer. When you go, okay, any other dimensions, I'm going to stop the YouTube video, and it's going to be my face. I'm going to say, all right, everybody, be warned. It's about to get heated. And then just let you guys go at it. Newsome uh, 2024. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. I like uh, okay, vehicle. let's stop. Stop. <laughs> um, Energy comment, crisis. Comment, like, subscribe below. I, if you, I really hope you like this video because it's great debate. We haven't seen uh, a duper Rick rant in a while. Um it's good to have them in small doses like this. So comment, let us know what you like. Let what us was know your down. greatest political story? Uh, what? I want to know who won the debate. Let us Nobody. know. Nobody. Nobody yeah, wins. That's, I was about argue. to get to that. Whoever you yeah. thought won Nobody the debate wins. too. Um, uh, got a little heated. Uh, but let us know who <laughs> and, you thought and, won. And what what is the most humane way that we can address the immigration that's crisis? That's what matters. Let's what put do we that do to down solve there this? in the comments. Yes. Right? I want to hear that part because that's what fucking matters, to be honest. Yes, uh, for both state and federal government. Best comments um, amongst all of the shows that we're dropping. Best comment we're going to get out there with some uh, swag. So look for some merch if you guys. Yes, and this can be a great one to comment on. So uh, yeah. please send us your love. Check out the other um, draft uh, shows that we have done to recap this year. They'll be all over here. Boom, 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 boom. Here's links to all of our social medias. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, thank you. Love you guys. And we will see you on the next one. Bye.